Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about gas chromatography. And this video covers the following topics. Introduction about gas chromatography, principle of gas chromatography, types of gas chromatography, compounds suitable for gas chromatography, compounds not suitable for gas chromatography, parts of gas chromatography, procedure of gas chromatography, chromatogram of gas chromatography, applications of gas chromatography, advantages of gas chromatography, and finally, limitations of gas chromatography. Gas chromatography. Gas chromatography is an analytical technique applicable to gas, liquid, and solid sample that are the components that are vaporized by heat. If a mixture of component is analyzed using the gas chromatography system, each compound can be separated and quantified. Gas chromatography is also sometimes known as vapor phase chromatography or gas liquid partition chromatography. The word gas in gas chromatography does not refer to the type of samples the technique applies to, but rather the fact that a gas carries the sample through the instrument. The first introduction of gas chromatography was made in 1952 by Anthony P. James and Archer J. P. Martin of the National Institute for Medical Research in London. The main purpose of the gas chromatography technique is to separate the compounds that possess high volatility, low molecular weights, and thermal stability. Principle of gas chromatography. Gas chromatography uses an inert or unreactive carrier gas as the mobile phase and the stationary phase is a thin layer of liquid. As the mobile phase moves, it separates the mixture into its individual components in the stationary phase. The mobile phase is a carrier gas, usually an inert gas such as helium or an unreactive gas such as nitrogen. The stationary phase is a microscopic thin layer of liquid or polymer on an inert solid support inside a piece of glass or metal tubbing called as collar. Column is a homage to the fractionating column used in the distillation. In gas chromatography, components in a mixture are distributed between the two phases, one of which is stationary phase and the other is mobile phase that carries the mixture through the stationary phase. Compounds in the mobile phase interact with the stationary phase as they pass through. Due to the differences in properties and structure of each components, the size and affinity of each interaction with the stationary phase are different. Therefore, under the same driving force, the retention time of different components differ in the column, thus moving out the column in different orders. Types of gas chromatography. There are two main types of gas chromatography. The first type is gas liquid chromatography and the second type is gas solid chromatography. Gas liquid chromatography involves mixing a small sample size of a volatile compound with a gaseous mobile phase to be passed through a non-volatile liquid stationary phase. Second, the gas solid chromatography is when the stationary phase is solid, this method separates the compound using the absorption, so has a much longer retention time than the gas liquid chromatography. Compounds suitable for gas chromatography. Components that can be analyzed with gas chromatography have the following three main features. The first one is compound with a boiling point up to 400 degrees Celsius. Second, compounds that are not decomposed at their vaporized temperature. And finally, for the third, compounds that decompose at their vaporized temperature but always by the same amount. This is called pyrolysis gas chromatography. Compounds not suitable for gas chromatography. Compounds that cannot be analyzed or difficult to analyze with the gas chromatography are uh, compounds that do not vaporize inorganic metals, ions and salts, highly reactive compounds and chemically unstable compounds like hydrofluoric acid and other strong acids, ozone, nitrogen monoxide and other highly reactive compounds, compounds that are difficult to analyze, highly absorptive compounds that are the compounds containing a carboxyl group 
hydroxyl group, amino group or sulfur and compounds for which standard samples are difficult to obtain. The qualitative and quantitative analysis are different for this kind of compounds. Parts of gas chromatography. Some of the important parts of gas chromatography are carrier gas, sample injector or sample injector port, separation column, liquid phase, support materials, detector, and finally recorder or computer or data analysis. These are the important parts of gas chromatography. The first part of gas chromatography is carrier gas. Carrier gas is filled in a high pressure cylinder with attendant pressure regulators and flow meters. Helium, nitrogen, hydrogen and argon are used as carrier gases. Helium is preferred for thermal conductivity detectors because of its high thermal conductivity relative to that of most organic vapors. Nitrogen is preferable when a large consumption of carrier gases is employed. The carrier gas from the tank passes through a toggle wall, a flow meter, capillary restrictors and a pressure gas. The flow rate is adjusted by means of a needle wall mounted on the base of the flow meter and controlled by capillary restrictors. The operating efficiency of the gas chromatography is directly dependent on the maintenance of constant gas flow. The second part of the gas chromatography is sample injector. Liquid samples are injected by a micro syringe with a needle inserted through a self-scaling silicon rubber septum into a heated metal block by a resistance heater. Gaseous samples are injected by a gas tight syringe or through a bypass loop and walls. A typical sample volume used for the gas chromatography analysis is range from 0.1 to 0.2 ml. The third part of the gas chromatography is separation column. The heart of the gas chromatography is the column which is made of metal bent in U shape or coiled into an open spiral or a flat pancake shape. Several sizes of columns are used depending upon the requirements and the commonly used columns are packed columns and capillary columns. The column is enclosed by a column oven which is responsible for maintaining a constant temperature during the isothermal operations. The fourth part of the gas chromatography is liquid phases. An infinite variety of liquid phases are available limited only by their volatility, thermal stability and ability to wet the support. No single phase will serve for all separation problems at all temperatures. The first liquid phase is non-polar. It includes paraffin, squalene, silicon greases, apizon, L, silicon gum rubber. These materials separate the compounds in order of their boiling point. The second liquid phase is intermediate polarity. These materials contain a polar or polarizable group on a long non-polar skeleton uh, which can dissolve both polar and non-polar solutes. For example, diethyl hexyl phthalate is used for the separation of high boiling alcohols. The third liquid phase is polar carbovaxes. Polar carbovaxes are the liquid phases with a large proportion of polar groups. It supports for the separation of polar and non-polar substances. The fourth liquid phase is hydrogen bonding. It includes the polar liquid phases with high hydrogen bonding. Example, glycol. The fifth and final liquid phase is specific purpose phase. It relying on a chemical reaction with solute to achieve separations. Example, silver nitrate in glycol separates unsaturated hydrocarbons. The fifth part of the gas chromatography is support materials. The structure and surface characteristic of the support materials are important parameters which determine the efficiency of the support and the degree of separation respectively. The support should be inert but capable of immobilizing a large volume of liquid phase as a thin film over its surface. The surface area should be large to ensure the rapid 
attainment of equilibrium between stationary and mobile phases and support material should be strong enough to resist breakdown in handling and be capable of packed into a uniform bed. Diatomaceous earth casually get treated with sodium carbonate for 900 degrees Celsius cause the particle fusion into coarser aggregates. Glass beads with a low surface area and low porosity can be used to coat it to 3% stationary phase. Porous polymer beads differing in the degree of cross-linking of styrene with alkyl vinyl benzene are used which are stable up to 250 degrees Celsius. The sixth part of the gas chromatography is detectors. Detectors sense the arrival of the separated components and provides a signal. Detectors are either concentration dependent or mass dependent. The detector should be close to the column exit and the correct temperature to prevent the decomposition. Common examples for the gas chromatographic detectors are flame ionization detector, thermal conductivity detector, and electron capture detector. The seventh part of the gas chromatography is recorder. The recorder should be fitted with a fast response pin of one second or less. The recorder should be connected with a series of good quality resistances connected across the input to attenuate the large signals. Procedure for gas chromatography. The procedure for gas chromatography includes three steps. Step one is sample injection and vaporization. Step two is separation in the column. Step three is detecting and recording results. In gas chromatography procedure, step one is sample injection and vaporization. A small amount of liquid sample to be analyzed is drawn up into a syringe. The syringe needle is positioned in the hot injection port of the gas chromatograph and the sample is injected quickly. The injection of sample is considered to be a point in time. That is, it is assumed that the entire sample enters the gas chromatograph at the same time. So the sample must be injected quickly. The temperature is said to be higher than the boiling points of the components of the mixer so that the components will vaporize. The vaporized components then mix with the inert gas mobile phase to be carried to the gas chromatographic column to be separated. The step two in the gas chromatography procedure is separation in the column. Components in the mixer are separated based on their abilities to absorb on or bind to the stationary phase. A component that absorbs most strongly to the stationary phase will spend the most time in column. It will be retained in the column for a longest time and will therefore have the longest retention time. It will emerge from the gas chromatograph last. A component that absorbs the least strongly to the stationary phase will spend the least time in the column and will be retained in the column for the shortest time and will therefore have the shortest retention time. It will emerge from the gas chromatograph first. If we consider a two component mixer in which component A is more polar than component B, then component A will have a longer retention time in a polar column than component B and Component A will have a shorter retention time in a non-polar column than component B. The final and third step of the gas chromatography is detecting and recording results. The components of the mixer reach the detector at different times. Due to differences in the time, they are retained in the column. The component that is retained the short time in the column is detected first and the component that is retained in the longest time in the column is detected last. The detector sends a signal to the chart recorder which results in a peak on the chart paper. The component that is detected first is recorded first. 
and the component that is detected last is recorded last. The chromatogram of gas chromatography. The data output of gas chromatography is a chromatogram which plots retention time typically in minutes on the Earth's axis and the detector response typically in picoamps on the Y axis. The retention time is a measure of how long it takes each compound band to travel from injection through the column and into the detector. The time is reproducible for a given set of instrument conditions. It includes column, flows, pressures, temperatures, etc. Applications of gas chromatography. In pharmaceuticals, gas chromatography is used to ensure the right ingredients are being used for a drug and that there are no contaminants in the batch. In drug analysis, if an unknown drug is found, gas chromatography can be used to identify its chemical makeup which ultimately helps us to understand its effects. In environmental safety, gas chromatography can be used to analyze an air sample to identify what pollutants are present in the environment. In forensics, gas chromatography can be used to analyze evidence at the crime scene. For example, in an, in an arson case, the chemical properties of fire residues can be analyzed to pinpoint how the fire was started. In food safety, if there is suspected contamination in the food, gas chromatography can be used to confirm which contaminants are present. Advantages of gas chromatography. The use of longer columns and higher velocity of carrier gas permits the fast separation in a matter of a few minutes. Higher working temperatures up to 500 degrees Celsius and the possibility of converting any materials into a volatile compound make gas chromatography one of the most versatile techniques. Gas chromatography is popular for environmental monitoring and industrial applications because it is very reliable and can be run nearly, nearly continuously. Gas chromatography is typically used in applications where small volatile molecules are detected and with non-aqueous solutions. Gas chromatography is favored for non-polar molecules. Limitations of gas chromatography. This gas chromatography cannot separate inorganic ions or polysaccharides. The compound to be analyzed should be stable under gas chromatography operation conditions. Gas chromatography should have a vapor pressure significantly greater than zero. Typically, the compound analyzed are less than 1000 Daltons because it is difficult to vaporize large compounds. The samples used for the gas chromatography uh, should be salt free and the samples should not contain any ions. And finally, a very minute amount of a substance can be measured, but it is often required that the sample must be measured in comparison to a sample containing the pure suspected substances known as reference standard. Uh, dear viewers, uh, that's all about the gas chromatography. Thank you for your support. Thank you.